Time to go to work. Jerk of all trades podcast, episode number 28. We are back, my friends. What's up, Ray? What is going on? We got an awesome show lined up today. We got lots of fun topics, as we always do. Uh, But we're going to start the podcast off in a little bit of a different way. So this is going to be another first for Eddie. Eddie breaking another cherry. Oh, my God. Well, if you peeped our Instagram tonight, you saw that I was taking a little sippy sip out of a half coconut. Which can only mean one thing. I got me a little cup of some kava juice, Ray. Uh, what do you know about that kava juice? So, uh, first thing we'll say is that kava is not actually a juice technically. So, <laughs> I should not to, not to be a know it all or anything. But so, uh, kava is basically uh, it's a uh, it's actually known as kava kava. Um, and kava kava. Um, I believe the uh, actually I don't think it has it here, but a uh, pipe. Piper, Piper, Mistium, or something like that. It's Uh-oh. the actual technical term. Anyway, am um, I gonna get drunk? I'm excited for this. Yeah. So basically, it's like a uh, root they've been using in the Pacific Islands for like over three thousand years, and uh, they use it in religious ritual ceremonies, and they kind of just use it to get fucked up as well. It's a natural analytic. Um, so it's basically like nature's Xanax, essentially. So basically what you do is uh, they get these roots and they fucking, uh, they, you know, they chop them down and then they grind them up into like a little powder form. And then uh, you basically put it in a bag and you would then put it into like warm water and you kind of knead it for a while and you get out the active ingredient in the kava and then you get rid of the actual like kava root itself And you just have this kind of grog, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. And um, grog. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, (laughs) the thing actually says that the kava juice is extracted from the roots. Uh, So I guess I guess it kind of is a kind of is actually a juice. So sweet. Um, Anyway, so, yeah, it kind of kind of gets you fucked up. So I was going to have Eddie give this a shot. So starting off the podcast, right? Yeah, this is cool. I saw a video of it on Instagram and these guys. These white dudes, I don't know where they went to. I, I, you know, I was just having a little fun one night and tripped up upon some uh, Kava videos. And uh, I know Ray's a big fan, so I decided to watch that video. Man, these guys got wasted off some drinky drink. So uh, bottoms up, my friend. Yes. Eddie is currently drinking a shell. A shell. You normally oh! drink a shell. Oh, no aftertaste at all on that bitch. <laughs> How'd, uh, how'd that work? <laughs> how'd not that, bad. How'd that work out for you? Oh, it's not too sweet, not too sour. Uh, hopefully, it makes Eddie the Jerk full of smarts and power up in his mug. Yeah, it's definitely a peppery is a good uh, is a way that I hear it described. So it's kind of, it's very Ooh. earthy and peppery, I guess. Um, it's very very strong, and you can see why. Mm-hmm. You know, instead of sipping it, you kind of chug this stuff. It made my tongue a little numb. Yes, yes. So that's the mark of good kava is that it actually makes your uh, your lips and your tongue and stuff numb. Oh, no. So. <laughs> Not good for a podcast host, but uh, yeah. we'll make the best of it. And you're no, you know your boy Eddie the Jerk is up for a challenge. So. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm starting to sweat, man. Holy mm. crap. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely – so they you're actually going to see this stuff start popping up a lot more here now. Um, it, um, you know, it just kind of made its way over here. And it, uh, you're starting to see what are called kava bars, um, which are, you know, basically like a bar, but you can go there and you can drink kava. So, um, people can kind of use this as a replacement for alcohol. I know a lot of people that, you know, kind of when I was start first starting to get into it and reading about it, a lot of people are using it for that. Not too Um, expensive. Um, I kind of got into it for the anti-anxiety kind of, uh, you know, uh, aspects of it. And yeah, it's really, it depends on where you get it. I mean, you can get the first stuff I got was like shitty stuff off of Amazon. Um, but then you start kind of delving in. I started going onto some forums and stuff. The, uh, the Reddit forum for, uh, Kava doing some reading about some different companies. And so, 
Um, this particular stuff, I believe, is from uh, Bulia, uh, Bulia Kava House uh, online, mm. um, which is one of the more well-known, reputable Kava um, you know, distributors online. So, cool. Yeah, this is definitely this one in particular is like supposed to be very, very hefty, and the the uh, the different. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> the different types. This is the nine point eight percent Chimera of. Uh, it really is. It really Kava. is. They actually describe this as like, yeah, you're not going to want to drive any power equipment after. Oh, great! Uh, drinking this stuff, so right, it definitely well, hits you hard. So. Spending the night watching WWE Network all night. Yeah. So, you want to take you want to take another shell? Yeah, I was going to ask you how many of these I need to feel it. Yeah. Uh. Why don't you, yeah take uh take two maybe take three take uh take two more so see how that goes for you and all right number two down the hatch buddy so yeah if, drop uh, that knowledge ray yeah if uh if you guys want to uh check uh some kava out so you can actually go to the store um and the first time i had kava there was like uh like a tea that basically has like kava you know kavala tones is what uh is the active ingredient and it basically what kind of starts to mess you up um and it's very very low 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 and then I then got my stuff online. So um, definitely. I need a chaser for this mode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times I, I have tried many different ways to try to kind of mask the taste of kava. Um, the best thing that I found is that Dole makes a uh, pina colada juice. And so I would actually like half and half it with that. But I mean, just chugging it usually is a good idea because otherwise you're stretching out. You it kind of just tastes like water, you know? If it's either this or some double IPA, give me some kava all day, every day. Yeah, it's definitely not bitter at all. Uh, earthy, earthy is definitely the best way that I can describe yeah, it. Yeah, slight so. aftertaste, but nothing you can't handle. If your boy Eddie the Jerk can handle it, it's not a problem. Yeah, so. Kava, good shit, man. I wonder uh, <laughs> I wonder how off the rails this is going to get after this. <laughs> I don't know. Keep 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 chugging and oh, see what happens. Oh, my goodness. I'm feeling good, though. It's making me hot, though, man. Holy cow. It'll definitely do that for sure. It definitely has some warming properties. Um, I also kind of describe the way that it feels. It kind of feels a bit like alcohol, but you're more clear-headed. You know, like you kind of feel I, drunk, I can, but I can feel that a little bit. Yeah, I can feel it feels like it just had a beer. Yeah, you know, yeah, it definitely kind of has this like calming effect on you. So um, it's very interesting. There's been some, uh, you know, some kind of questions about it. And like uh, they were looking to potentially ban it because they were I think it was actually banned in Europe because they were saying there were some issues with like, uh, you know, liver damage and stuff, which was completely unfounded. And they've kind of retracted some of those statements now. So too late for all that. But I feel like, uh, (laughs) I feel like this is still as more people find out about this, it's definitely going to blow up more and more. There's way more Kava bars than there used to be. And I feel like the more Kava bars, Kava bars, you're talking about flavors and like a lounge. Yeah. Yeah. They go there and they, you know, they have different types of Kava root and, you know, they've got the bowls set up and, um, I think a lot of times it's, you know, just the kava itself, but they have drinks and stuff with kava in it as well. People nice. just go there in place of going to, you know, the regular, you know, alcohol bar. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So. Definitely interesting. You learn something new every week here at the JOAT podcast. Well, all right, man, I'm on that kava now and I'm feeling good. So let's get right to the results of last week's universal call out, which I thought would be a safe call out, but apparently not rabbits, right? Oh my God. What man. the hell? What did we do? So last oh. week, so we had un- the unfortunate results of our universal call out uh, last week in which we um, we did wrestling and we called that hopefully um, no wrestlers would die. I believe said that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I knew ahead of time it was like it, no not wrestling yeah and unfortunately bobby the brain he and one of the greatest of all time unfortunately passed away and so this week or at the end of that episode we did the randomizer and we ended up deciding upon rabbits rabbits what could go rabbits. wrong with I, rabbits right I believe, I believe i said something to the effect of like you know there might be a killer rabbit or something like that <laughs> um, and uh i hoped not and so anyway, I started to, you know, kind of look at stories online and, um, you know, looking up rabbit in the news, uh, bunny in the news. And uh, I thought it was interesting on Sunday, I came upon a video from the Today Show and it was about Playboy and it was about Hugh Hefner's son who has taken over Playboy. And it was about how Playboy is basically trying to um, develop their brand in this era now because of the 
the ready, uh, ease, um, readily available pornography that's out there. Um, the fact that, you know, Playboy was soft core porn. Oh, dude. Um, the, uh, you know, they at one point decided that they were going to do away with nudity. They ended up reversing that. He came well, back in. Let me just touch on the pornography thing. Playboy is, you know, a magazine, which is strike one because everything is digi- digital now. Right. And like you just mentioned, porn is everywhere. So Literally like, everywhere. You know, if your little hot super fly, uh, half naked or completely naked, you know, one titty hanging out, maybe an ass cheek, and then the other page, you get full-blown, you know, cooch. But it's Photoshopped to high hell. Yeah, well, you, you get that. And then on the other hand, you get, like, your double penetration. <laughs> on your other hand. <laughs> yeah, barely legal, you know, like, three chicks giving you a, a blowjob at the same time. It's like, which one are you going to choose? It's right. hard to tell. Right. It's not that hard to tell. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah obviously. <laughs> um, and I mean, they face competition, too, with, you know, like other Hustler. Uh, like Hustler back in the Penthouse. day, Penthouse and such. So, I mean, I can say, you know, personally, you know, back in the day. Yeah. You know, it was cool. I mean, I got to look at my first Playboy and I had a few Playboys over the year. But, um, you know, even by the point that I was kind of, you know, coming of age, um, you had VHS, you had, you know, pornography available that way. You had, uh, you know, swank magazine and shit mm-hmm. like that. So it's yeah. like, instead of having to look at, you know, softcore porn and, you know, Photoshopped stuff and, you know, Playboy wasn't just that though. The, you know, the famous thing, you know, we read it for, I read it for the articles thing. I, I mean, I will say that, uh, Playboy actually had a lot of interesting articles. Definitely. Um, actually the person that, I have as my book selection for my Audible uh, trial, which is Robert Anton Wilson, actually started as a writer at Playboy. Um, oh, and nice. He branched off from that and, you know, started, you know, became what he became. So um, Playboy was definitely very influential for a very, very long time. And so they're kind of struggling. Um, but anyway, so kind of where that ended up is then uh, I believe it was, uh, was it on Monday or was it on Tuesday? Um, but, well, you, uh, when, uh, Hugh Hefner, unfortunately, uh, ended up passing away. I think that was Tuesday. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So obviously that was the shitty results of the universal call out is, and very interesting after I saw, you know, that playboy video, I was like, Oh, bunnies and, you know, rabbits. And so it made sense. And then, you know, 91 years old, half freaking half passes away. So craziness. Um, definitely. Uh, yeah. definitely Shout sucks. out to Hugh Hefner. Uh, I'm starting to think this randomizer is like <laughs> is the culprit of all this. It's very possible. <laughs> it's man. not us. It's the randomizer. He's 91 years old, and now he he dies of natural causes. But you know, come on. Come but on. Uh, yeah, they tried to shut Hugh Hefner down back in the day. Uh, he started out in Chi Town, Chicago. Yeah, that was where the uh, the first uh, first the mansion was original pl- uh, Playboy Mansion. You know, uh, it was very very for the time. You know, early 60s. To have, you know, naked women in a magazine was very, very risky. Super revolutionary, man. And he took the risk and he reaped the rewards from it. Absolutely, man. Which just goes to show you, you know, you take a risk, you take a chance and, you know, it's not always, you're not going to be Hugh Hefner every time. It's not always going to work out for you. But what if Hugh Hefner never created Playboy? Like some, obviously somebody else would have came out with a magazine with naked chicks in it. Obviously we talked about Penthouse and Hustler. But he was the first one to do it, and he had to fight several battles of people going against him and protesting him, and he fought back, and he fought the good fight. And, uh, you know, R.I.P. Hugh Hefner, because he was a pioneer of Dude, the times. totally revolutionary, man. You know, look at um, look at how sex is looked at so much differently than it used to be. Um, you know, obviously, it was very stifled in, you know, the, the 50s and, and uh, such, so... Um, he definitely was someone that, you know, kind of changed that um, without a doubt. So total revolutionary and obviously lived a pretty amazing life. His uh, his wife, Crystal, who uh, survived him, uh, he married her when she was 25 years old. He was 85. So she's uh, 30, <laughs> 31 years old now. <laughs> Crazy. Um, and, you know, obviously you had all the other, you know, the multiple different uh, ladies always on his arm. So he was uh, he definitely lived a very, very 
uh, interesting and I wonder fun what, life. I wonder what happens to the Playboy Mansion now. Obviously, his kids probably get it, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think. But are they still going to throw parties there? And, you know, the, the Playboy Mansion is like an attraction. For sure. Yeah, I would assume that, you know, his son would probably get it. That's, I don't know that for sure, though. So. Yeah. Maybe he'll sell it, cash in on it. Yeah, I mean, he's the CEO right now, so I think he's doing okay. So I yeah. think he's going to probably continue to build the brand and stuff. So More money is always a good thing. Yeah. So Sweet. So you want to talk about this crazy-ass uh, United Bunny Ray? Yeah, yeah. So For our fans, of the, uh, long-time fans of the podcast, you know the jerk of all trades. Do not appreciate any cruelty against animals, especially bunny rabbits. And Lovable bunny rabbits. A few it. months ago, I think it was in April motherfucking united airlines they got the first middle finger of the week oh they were the first huh mm-hmm. nice okay so these motherfuckers killed a three-foot bunny the guinness book of world records biggest bunny died on a united airline that was after they flight. beat that Asi- the, uh, yeah that was after they beat the chinaman <laughs> i think right <laughs> that poor asian guy man. oh man uh so. so we have an update to the uh to the story we, we reported on first yeah, so they are under fire. They are under attack uh, by the giant bunny's owner, who the the bunny's owner is actually a former Playboy playmate. Yes, who uh, who looks <laughs> who in the picture here is dressed up like Jessica Rabbit, and uh, yeah, I mean more power to her, you know. But she's uh, probably shouldn't be in that outfit. But anyway, um, oh, dude. And uh, by the way, there's a Charmin commercial that's uh, coming up on here. Oh, wow. So we'll, we'll touch on that later. Synchro. So anyway, uh, <laughs> what uh, what happened is the, uh, you know, they're being sued. And so apparently uh, United Airlines referred to Simon as damaged luggage. Ew. And they're not, not happy about that at all. Um, cold. Yes. Ice cold. At, of, Ice fucking cold. So apparently, I don't know that this has actually been confirmed and United is denying, but supposedly he was locked inside of a freezer for 16 hours. And that's what happened. He froze to death. But uh, United is saying that's not the case. Um, But yeah, United is uh, just basically, you know, trying to get uh, get the case thrown out of court. And so they're trying to minimize. I'm telling you right now, United can kiss my ass. I'm never flying United. It can be the last flight out of town. I'll just spend the night in the parking lot. Thank you very much. United's not getting any of my money. You're not dragging Asians off planes anymore. Mm-hmm. You're not killing bunnies and getting away with it. So uh, fuck you, United, still. Seriously. I mean, this is an adorable, ador- well, was a giant adorable bunny. And, you know, now he is resting in peace, hopefully. So it's fucked up. So, yeah. Well, on to a much light, much more lighthearted story. The get from one Guinness Book of uh, World Record bunny to another here. Uh, the world record basketball bunny, Benny. You want to talk about this one too, Ray? Yeah, Ben Benny the bunny. So <laughs> this dude is the best basketball playing bunny that there has ever been. He's a five year old Holland Lop rabbit. He's from Cali, of course. He is California. Knows how to breed rabbits that know how to <laughs> dunk bad. Slam dunk. Uh, so yeah, so he can uh, he can str- he can uh, dunk seven balls into a miniature basketball hoop within a minute. There's actually a video which I ha- actually have not watched yet, so I want to just watch it as we kind of you know discuss this. Yes. Here's the bunny. Watch this video. This bunny is man. He has got mad dunking skills. He's I, the cutest little bunny you've ever seen in your life. He, he's got a fucking... <laughs> he's got a basketball jersey on. <laughs> um, yeah. He looks pretty fucking cool. Here he is coming up towards the camera. That's his owner petting him and stuff. So, so cute. So, so, so cute. Yeah, is I guess his owner is... Uh, I don't know where he's from, but... He makes him practice dunking the basketball every night yes, before the it's rabbit a, goes to bed. It's a ritual every night he goes and dunks. Oh, he's got dude, he's got a little basketball fucking mat there for him. That's goddamn adorable. He's got his own custom basketball uh hoop there. And apparently this rabbit is so talented, not only does it dunk basketballs, 
but it's also capable of styling hair and painting by holding a toothbrush, a toothbrush, a paintbrush in his mouth. I know there's a there's a picture. <laughs> they got a picture of it. <laughs> it's not the best painting I've ever seen, but goddamn, if he doesn't look fucking adorable, Van Gogh, you better watch your ass. This uh, bunny's coming for you, Guinness Book. Go- I think Van Gogh is dead. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And you know what, too? Oh, maybe, Van- hopefully it was on a United flight. Hey, maybe Van Gogh was always upset that he didn't have bunny ears, and that's why he cut his own ear off. Ew. Is that possible? <laughs> Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that made sense in my fucking head, but yeah, I don't know. So. <laughs> but yeah, this bunny is... Uh, I love is- this bunny, Ray. It's my favorite bunny story of all time. And you know what? That's going to make it even more upsetting when we talk about our next two bunny stories. And yeah. These two stories kind of tie together, and both of these guys are actually getting the middle finger of the week this week. We've got a rabbit that was killed by a burglar in uh, North Devon. Um, apparently, some dude broke. Well, we don't know if it was a dude, but uh, broke into this uh, broke into this house and um, yeah, it was a dude. It's his sister's house. No, that's no. oh no, it's the sister's no, rabbit. I'm no, sorry. that's the other story. Oh, you're on the other one. This no, this is the uh You're the, on the burglar. This is the burglar. A burglar broke into someone's uh house in the, the yeah, UK. Yeah, it doesn't and, say. Yeah, killed killed their uh, pet bunny, so that's fucked up. Bull uh, fucking shit. Yes. Bunny, Stop killing bunnies, guys. Bunny damn it. shit. And then uh then we also have the other guy. We've got a uh, man who crushed his sister's <laughs> rabbit to death, so he just got probation. Uh this is in uh Connecticut. Um, did they list this guy's name? Julian Torres. He yeah, was, fuck uh, this guy. Two years probation. Apparently, he wanted to use his sister's phone, and she would not allow him to do that. And so he then killed, he stomped on her rabbit named Peter Griffin. <laughs> so, was he a family guy? He might have been. A, he, apparently, this guy wasn't a family guy. He was <laughs> no. a fucking asshole, so <laughs> yeah. he stomped on <laughs> Oh, uh, the bunny died from internal bleeding. Yeah, so that's a playoff Peter uh, Peter Cottontail, I guess, right? So yeah, yeah. I believe there's actually a a, a movie coming out. Uh, the trailer just dropped this week for a new uh, Peter Cottontail movie that looks fucking terrible too. So yeah, apparently this Torres guy and his sister suffer from mental illnesses. Mm, yeah, okay, yeah, don't we all? So. I read more about fucking bunny. I'd rabbits claim that too. After killing a bunny rabbit, yeah. I was like, "Hey, man, I'm 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 dumb. I can't. Yeah. Do, I messed up." So that definitely was not very cool. So, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, bunnies definitely, uh, de- bunnies definitely made it happen for us in the universal call out again. Um, but yeah, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't once again, you know, kind of end here with uh, a big rest in peace to Hugh Hefner. You were definitely one of a kind, without a doubt. So, and I'll tell you who else is one of a kind, and that is Eddie the Jerk when it comes to breaking down UFC, and he is going to do just that. So, Eddie, why don't you hit him with your breakdown of UFC 216? It's going to be live on pay-per-view on October 7th. Thank you, sir, for the kind words. Yes, indeed. UFC 216 is going to be live, and I'm very much looking forward to it. This main event, do not sleep on this main event. I'm telling you right now. There is no way that this fight is going to suck. Tony Ferguson versus Kevin Lee for the interim lightweight title. Uh, Currently, the lightweight champion is uh, Conor McGregor, but uh, everybody knows Conor McGregor. Uh, Not fighting anybody right now. (laughs) So they have to have two guys fight for the... uh, not Conor McGregor championship. Oh, really? That's I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> but hopefully, the winner of this calls his ass out and uh, you know gets on the mic and rocks this shit. This is essentially like the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon Intercontinental thing from back in the day. Then, yeah, like that basically, yeah, basically, what it boils down to. Uh, I think this is more like the Razor Ramon Jeff Jarrett uh, Intercontinental, maybe okay. yeah. something like that. But uh, yeah, man. So uh, I'm gonna be breaking this down. The main event's super nice. Uh, for the size and the reach, going to El Kukui, Tony Ferguson. Uh, he's a little bit taller, and he's got a lot more reach. <clears throat> Wait, what is this? Oh, dude. His nickname is El Kukui. Weird. Uh, that's actually a uh, a name of a song by a band called Coal Chamber. So Nice. I, yeah. I think it stands for the boogeyman in Spanish, ah, but I'm not well, sure. Well, that would make sense. Okay. Yeah. I just learned what that uh, <clears throat> name of that song meant after 20 years, so. And then the other, and then obviously uh, the Motown phenoms Kevin Lee, uh, so uh, 
grappling and wrestling. This is tough because I'm telling you right now, the wrestling, I'm going to have to give it to Kevin Lee because he's a little bit shorter. He's got a little bit more power in his double leg. Uh, but Tony Ferguson's Brazilian jiu-jitsu is on point. He's a 10th planet jiu-jitsu practitioner. Which means he's got tricks for days. Whoa, is that is that actually how they describe that? Tenth planet is that? Yes, wow. indeed. Come on, now. I did not know that. Eddie Bravo, Eddie Bravo. Yeah, uh, he's a frequent. Uh, fuck degrees, dude. We got planets, bro. Yes, <laughs> it sounds awesome as fuck. It does sound it? cool. Tenth planet well, jujitsu. I like uh, it. He's one of Joe Rogan's friends. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Tony Ferguson's a black belt all day. He's got submissions all day. So if Kevin Lee wants to try to take this to the ground. You got to be careful. Uh, but Tony Ferguson is susceptible to getting taken down and beaten up because it has happened to him before. He won a slightly controversial split decision in the past where he got taken down repeatedly and he was fighting off his back for the majority of the fight. So even when he's on his back, he's still dangerous and can still win the fight. Striking, this is easy. Power goes to Ferguson. Oh, I'm sorry, power goes to Lee. And the technique, a little bit better technique, goes to. Uh, Ferguson and the volume of strikes will definitely go to Ferguson. Stamina and athleticism. Stamina goes to Ferguson. Athleticism, I'm going to give to Motown Phenom, Kevin Lee. Toughness in the chin. This is close, but I'm going Ferguson here. He's battle tested. Uh, Not saying Kevin Lee totally isn't battle tested, but if I got to go one way or the other, definitely got to go with uh, Tony Ferguson here. By the way, can I real quick? I'm sorry to interrupt here, but go ahead. Do you think that growing up, and I hope that I never meet him, and that he never, he never hears what I have to say. But do you think that people made fun of him, and do you think that they called him Turd Ferguson? Oh, it's possible. Like that's probably <laughs> why. It's probably why he's a fighter. <laughs> he's just mad because because that's because that's what I would have called him. <laughs> and then until he whooped my ass like yeah. one time and then i would have never done that again but yeah, yeah. that would have stopped pretty quick <laughs> but uh yeah it's possible man all right with all that said eddie the jerk official prediction tony ferguson via unanimous decision maybe a split decision i just think that the stamina and the volume of striking is gonna be a little too much for kevin lee um but Kevin Lee is very dangerous. This should be a very exciting fight. Uh, the The hardest thing is that the takedowns. Uh, if Kevin Lee lands those takedowns, that uh, he's got he's got minus p's and q's because Tony Ferguson is really good off his back. So uh, yeah, either way, you can't can't beat it. This fight is super good, and uh, you know I just gotta go with El Kukui on this one. Just it, it's close. Now if you're betting this. Uh, Tony Ferguson's a two to one favorite. I think this fight is closer than that. So if you want to go underdog here for a bet, I'm not mad at you. A uh, super close fight, and in a close fight, always take the underdog. Uh, that's my stance on it. So moving on to the next one, <clears throat> in a not close fight, <laughs> Demetrius Mighty Johnson versus Ray Borg for the flyweight title. Uh, if Demetrius Johnson wins this fight. He will break the UFC title defense record. It will be number 11, and he will be breaking Anderson the Spider Silva's record, my personal favorite fighter of all time. Uh, so it's a little bittersweet. I do. Uh, I love watching greatness, and I do like hi- watching history being made. So I, I definitely got my eyes on this. Uh, but I'm definitely not sleeping on Ray Borg. Uh, you know, upsets happen all the time in MMA and UFC. Uh, currently, Demetrius Johnson is a minus twelve fifty favorite, <laughs> and Ray Borg is a eight to one underdog. Uh, if you're down on your luck and you don't have a whole lot of money in your bank account, you can throw money on Ray Borg. <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst idea in the world. I but, wish that uh, was. If I was a robot, that would be my name. Ray Borg. Yeah, Ray Borg. Dude, <laughs> isn't that a good name? Ray Borg. That's a that's a great name. God damn it! Now if I turn into a robot, now my That'll name is already taken. Now my name is already taken. <laughs> God damn it! Oh uh, well, eh, just spell it differently. Yeah, I suppose. So uh, yeah, just to break this down really quick, uh, size and reach pretty equal. Uh, grappling and wrestling, giving it to Demetrius Johnson. Striking goes to Demetrius Johnson. Stamina and athleticism goes to Demetrius Johnson. <laughs> toughness and chin, I'm going to give to Ray Borg. <laughs> and he's going to need all that toughness and chin. Ray Borg. 
Ray he, Borg. I'm I, piping that in. Yeah, I just think Demetrius Johnson is a very intelligent fighter, a very fast fighter, and a very strong fighter. He's strong in all areas. He has no weakness. <clears throat> and uh, for Ray Borg to win this, uh, he's got to put it on him somehow. Uh, you know, Demetrius Johnson at 125 pounds is virtually unstoppable. And uh, I kind of saw it coming. I, 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 my first time watching Demetrius Johnson was on a WEC card. He lost to uh, Brad Pickett, but I was just, for, for a guy losing, I was supremely impressed. And I knew one day that this guy would be somebody. Lo and behold, here he is, fucking breaking Anderson Silva's record. Thank you very much, Demetrius Johnson. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, do the damn thing, man. And uh, Eddie the Jerk will definitely be watching. So uh, on to the next one. Uh, official prediction here. Uh, Demetrius Johnson by third round uh, arm. Uh, yeah, arm bar. Submission. Give me a submission. Third round submission for uh, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, last but not least, I, I don't want to take too long on here, so I'm just going to cut it after this one here. <clears throat> Fabric- this is a heavyweight match. Fab- Fabricio Verdum. Oh, man, the Cava. Hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Versus Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, one of my favorite oh my fighters. Oh, my God. Ray, These nicknames, man. You got to get on Instagram and peep game on uh, Black Beast, Derek I Lewis. I will definitely do that. He's got the funniest Instagram posts you will ever see, and uh, he keeps it real. So uh, definitely feeling some Derek Lewis up in here. Uh, the size and the reach. The reach goes to Verdum, but I think uh, Black Beast has got him beat in the weight. I think he's heavier than uh, than uh, Verdum by a little bit, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Grappling and wrestling is easy. This is going to Verdum. Uh Black Beast is uh he, he's a self-proclaimed uh swanger and banger, Ray. Mm. <laughs> so even if you don't know much technically about UFC, you can watch Derek Lewis and he is throwing hammers from all different directions. Wait, so like he and his wife like to like, you know, bring other people and fuck them. Right? You said he's a, a swanger and a banger. Swanging and banging, man. Oh, oh, okay. H Town. Right. He's from Houston. Oh, interesting note on Derek Lewis. He's actually one of the guys when the Hurricane Harvey hit in Houston. He was one of those like good Samaritans that was helping people in the floods, like not die and shit. That would be a good person to be helping people. Too. Hell yeah, like dude! Pick he, a lot of people. He's up. like a real life fucking superhero. He's like six foot three, two hundred and sixty something pounds, and he's just he's just big black dude, just like reaching into people's cars and mm-hmm. saving them while like their cars floating away and right, shit. Right, but. But cops, <laughs> cops were like, but the police get officer, out of the car. <laughs> but the police officer Put was like, down. you're on your own. <laughs> we can't save you. We already told you, but Black Beast is out there saving people's lives. So big yeah. up to the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Uh, striking power goes to uh, Black Beast. And the technical striking definitely goes to Verdum. Verdum has improved his striking uh, immensely over the years. So keep an eye on uh, Verdum here. And then uh, <clears throat> stamina and athleticism is easy. Stamina to Verdum. Eh, maybe give athleticism to Verdum here, too. Uh, toughness and chin, I'm giving to uh, Black Beast for sure. Uh, for all of his faults, you know, Derek Lewis isn't the most technical guy. Uh, he's he's a throwback to, like, you know, the old school. With the old fools. Yeah, the old school UFC guys where it wasn't a lot of uh, well-roundedness. Derek Lewis is just looking to knock you the fuck out, and uh, and he's tougher than a motherfucker. So that's probably going to be his game plan, and that's why I'm giving him the toughness and the chin. But uh, for an official prediction, I'm going for Bricio Verdum by a unanimous decision. I think he'll probably play it safe and be smart and stay away from Derek Lewis's power, at least until the second or third round. Uh and uh, yeah, that's that. That pretty much wraps it up, man. Fabricio Verdum by decision. Uh, go out and win some money. The uh, the line on this one is close. It's uh, two and a half for Verdum and uh, Derek Lewis plus two hundred. Uh, I can't really tell you where to go either way on here. Heavyweights, I usually go underdog, but uh, Verdum's an ex champion. Uh, he's got he's a black belt in jujitsu. He's got the experience, so it, it, it's a hard one to call. So, Very good, man. Yeah, it should be a fun, fun event. So, uh, Ray, I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm feeling this fucking comma <laughs> right now. <laughs> Is this shit going to give me a hangover or what? 
I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be okay. Actually, uh, there is actually no hangover related to Kava. So Excellent. Well, even if I did, I think this fucking guy from Tesla has my back for a hangover and he's yes, got a he cure. Does. You yes, want to tell does. him about it, Ray? Yeah, you why don't you uh why don't you take a take another shell and I'll uh I'll I just reached down for oh, it. Did you? <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll hit the story. So yeah, so we have uh Sisun Lee. Uh he was a Tesla engineer and he uh he uh discovered basically I guess he didn't fully discover it. Um, he's just kind of uh, marketing it, and uh, he's kind of adding to it. But basically, there is a herbal compound, uh, and it is not going to be pronounced by me. Uh, DHM is the acronym for it, so I'm going to call it that. Oh, I got your back, bro. Uh, found, Where's it at? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't find any. Oh, Dihydro my rice tin. Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it, son. You didn't need my help. Uh, <laughs> It's found in the Ori- uh, Oriental Raisin Tree and uh, Rattan Tea. So um, I guess I've been using that for thousands of years over in Asia to cure hangovers. Um, and basically what it does is it helps to remove the uh, toxic acid that is uh, happening in your system. Uh, <laughs> that's that uh, that's that that's that kava being put to work right oh there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering, I haven't gone anywhere. Yeah, no, Eddie is still here. He's still here. No, no big deal. We're leaving that in. We're leaving it in. Uh, so anyway, so uh, he decided he hadn't seen anything here that you know was utilizing that. So he decided to bring this uh, Korean drink over here, and so he was uh, testing it with himself and his buddies. He started doing it by himself and getting drunk every night, and then he would test the next day by taking the tea the next day. And then greatest job ever. Other times he <laughs> uh, he did not, uh, which one not as good then. Uh, and he gained 15 pounds in the process. So test uh, results showed that uh, it worked on 80% of uh, people who tried it. So, um, yeah, basically he took that drink and then he added a bunch of other shit to it. It's got uh, vitamin C um, and vitamin B, vitamin B. Um, so got a bunch of stuff, good shit in there along with the uh, the DHM. And uh, so, yeah, he started opposite a- middle finger of the week to this guy, right? Yeah, he, uh, he started. uh <laughs> started uh his company up actually you know i will say that you know this kind of wasn't uh, listed in this thing but um i kind of noticed online in in the comments and stuff a lot of people were kind of upset by it because they were kind of saying that you know hangovers and kind of their purpose is to try to kind of keep you in line and keep you you know for maybe not overdoing it now if people you know potentially didn't have hangovers anymore would they potentially drink even more and we know the damage and effects of alcohol. Yes. So now people could be drinking even more if they have a absolute fail safe for not getting a hangover. Catch twenty two. So I mean, but I'll tell you what, I don't <laughs> I don't want to get a fucking hangover and I'm not ready to quit drinking completely. So uh Well you yeah. I got a life hack for uh all of our fans out there, Jerk of All Trades podcast. Your boy Eddie the Jerk, every time he gets drunk, not every time, but uh whenever I can if I know it's going to be bad the next day, it's a multivitamin, some apple cider vinegar, and a probiotic. Probiotic. The next morning, you'll be feeling great no matter how much you drink. But you got to be responsible and take your goddamn vitamins before you go to sleep or else you're going to be feeling like yeah. shit. Yeah, I, you know, I have always found that drinking, if you drink equal amounts of water to the alcohol that you're drinking... That tends to do... Yeah, but that's too much work. But, yes, then once again, then you have to fucking drink water, and that also ruins your buzz, too. Yeah, yeah, and you're losing the buzz, yeah. Right, so, yeah, so really, you know, it's not as fun, so maybe... The interesting thing I found here was that uh, these guys posted a video on Facebook, and they now have over 30,000 people who have signed up on their website to get this fucking product. Of course they do. Which is the main reason why he's leaving Tesla now. He's like, yeah, the Tesla money's good. But, you know, I, I can make this money uh, selling my little hangover cure here. So my question is, how much does this goddamn thing cost? Uh, I don't and know. And where can I get this damn thing? I don't know. Mor- morning recovery is what it's called. Morning recovery. I got my eye out for this. It's probably still in, uh, yeah. you know, testing or, you know, the test phase and shit like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what? I feel like. FDA approved. Yeah. It's well, it's not FDA. Re- it, all the ingredients that are in oh, it. Oh, my bad. Are FDA re- approved. It is not itself so are you thinking about investing in something like this i mean when it comes out i will definitely fucking it's worth a shot right 
I will definitely pick up one and give it a shot, right? What if it's like literally give it a shot? (laughs) I'll take a bunch of shots the night before and then in the morning I'll give that a shot. Well, yeah, hopefully it's not like a 20 ounce thing that you have to drink. It's just like like the kava. You just pour a little little, little something in there and then you get the no hangover. Yeah, it looks like the bottle is actually kind of small. It's in a hand and it looks to be pretty small in that hand depending on how big that hand is. It looks like a female's hand, but it might be man hands. I'm not sure. Crazy. Um, But. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's all that uh, all that big, so you can kind of just chug that. I'll tell you what, because, yeah, I mean, it's tough, man, to try to force yourself, you know, when you're really, really, really fucking hungover, to try to eat something, like take those little, like, baby bunny bites and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah it's fucking not, not easy. So this would be cool if you could just chug this shit and you could start to feel better right away. So Yeah, that yeah. would be nice. I'm all about it. So Hell yeah. uh, I'll tell you what else I am all about, and that is social media. Woo! And Eddie is also about it. And so I'll let Eddie take it away. Oh, you know what time it is. We are on fire with the social media, man. Jerk of all trades podcast. You can find us at JOATpodcast.com for weekly funny picks, show notes, and videos from our video corner. Hit us up. Any questions you got or you just want to, you know, just give us a little comment. Just tell us how we're doing with the show. Jerk of all trades podcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to us if you haven't already on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Leave a comment and review while you're there. And then also subscribe to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash J-O-A-T podcast. We got Ray drawing naked chicks on Drawful. We got Quiplash. On fire. And uh, another thing, too, for the uh, JOATpodcast.com, a lot of the uncensored, unfiltered, you know, too hot for TV stuff get definitely gets thrown up on JOATpodcast.com. So don't sleep on that JOATpodcast.com. And then last but not least, I, I did say this, or Ray did say this was the social media segment. I haven't said anything about social media, but here you go. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, you know what time it is. Just search for us. You can't miss us. Eddie the Jerk, Ray the Jerk, all day, every day. Let's go. Yes, we're going to break. We're coming back. We got lots of fun topics, so we'll see you on the flip side. Hey, what's up, guys? Eddie the Jerk here from the Jerk of All Trades podcast, and thank you for hanging out with us. As you guys already know, I've been on this Audible for a while now, and I'm totally digging it. When you use the link audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast, you get a free audiobook when you sign up, a free audiobook every 30 days thereafter, and discounted audiobook pricing as an Audible member. If you already have an Amazon account, it's so easy to sign up. It literally took me like 10 seconds to set everything up. My audiobook of choice this month is Game of Thrones. A Song of Fire and Ice, book number one. If you haven't seen the show, no big deal. Go ahead and get caught up with this audiobook. And for you fans of Game of Thrones, you already know what time it is. You're going to love this audiobook. Once again, the link is audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Go start up your Audible subscription like a king with Audible and the Jerks. Has the universe ever called out to you? Well... It's calling out to you now, and it demands you listen to the Jerk of All Trades podcast. Every Thursday night, Eddie and Ray tackled the absurdity of this world via a cornucopia of topics ranging from hot-button mainstream news, tech, robotics, progressive medicine, UFC, WWE, and so much more. Jerk of All Trades, changing the world one podcast at a time. All right, we are back in the saddle again. Yes. Back from break. And so last week we had our Robot Spectacular, the very latest and greatest in robotics. And we covered at length the sex robots. We actually covered a couple different ones. We covered a documentary called My Sex Robot. Um, the uh, We also covered a robot uh, guy that was on a morning show in the UK and it, the sex robot had some outbursts about how much dick she could take and <laughs> had a family setting for their kids to play with her and to do her hair and shit. And uh, people were not all that happy about it. And uh, so anyway. I love that. This that is, is the, that's still my favorite part of like last week's oh show. Oh, my God. Yes, she is. Uh, I can take all of your love. Yeah, so, forever and ever and ever. Yeah, she is. Uh, 
She was the sexy one, the one with the sexy face. Uh, she was the one that was speculated that uh, maybe Ray the Jerk might be investing in. <laughs> and uh, maybe not now. So uh, oh, Samantha the no. Sex Robot was actually assaulted. Uh, she was groped uh, and molested. Oh, and, uh, she was uh, She was left, quote unquote, heavily soiled and in need of repairs after being molested while on display at a uh, tech fair. So um, this thing costs or, you know, Samantha, sorry, let's not call it a thing. Um, she was, uh, it cost $4,000. She was groped by sex hungry men at the Ars Electronica festival that was in Austria. Austrian mm. men. I do whatever I want with Samantha. <sighs> um, that was my Austrian impression. It was pretty terrible, but, uh, anyway, yeah, they, I'm offended. No, <laughs> they really fucked her up, man. They fucking broke her fingers and shit. Um, I guess they were, uh, they were like ripping and tearing at her breasts and such. Um, yeah, they uh, they really fucked her up. Uh, I believe they said that uh, people can be bad because they did not understand the technology and they did not have to pay for it. They treated the doll like by bar- barbarians. Barbarians. So don't be barbaric to sex robots, or they're you know going to not be happening. See, that's the problem. These things with- are expensive, man. Yeah. See, like that's the problem when you buy a three thousand pound sex robot it's just that all your buddies are just gonna try and get it in while this thing is just oh, hanging dude, out dude i was itself. so confused i was like it weighs three thousand pounds that's so <laughs> fucking hard to pick up yeah. oh wait that's what it costs in the uk so that's yeah cool. sorry so like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck it's so heavy that's not oh my god you need a crane to fucking lift it <laughs> Out of your bed <laughs> crushes your bed it fucking oh bra- breaks your floor yeah like, samantha's definitely going on you gotta bottom. keep it outside man oh <laughs> you gotta keep God. it in your fucking front lawn and that just reminds me of like the se- my sex ro- robot movie imagine if both of those sex robots are clanking heads oh together God. with three thousand pounds, pounds. <laughs> they would they been... destroy the house like oh another earthquake <laughs> yeah Fuck. Fucking sex robots again. That's how robots take over the fucking world, dude. <laughs> yeah, they fuck each other and cause massive earthquakes. More than meets the eye. So uh, apparently Samantha can endure a lot. Yes. And she will pull through, but she doesn't appreciate you barbarians mm. putting your hands all over and fucking breaking her fingers. So we already shit. knew that she could endure a lot because her owner programmed her to say that when yeah. he was giving her the D. So, uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, because of her allergies, I'm talking about, you know, the dick. Um, but yeah, she's going to pull through. She's going to be okay. They're going to fix her. They're going to, you know, get her back to normal. And hopefully even better. And hopefully these goddamn Austrian barbarians can Fucking leave her savages. the fuck alone. Damn. She doesn't want it. And <laughs> wait, she's a robot. This wasn't even frigid Farah, dude. I know. That's so crazy. Maybe that's why. Of all the robots, I thought Samantha would be all about it. Just like, bring it on, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they. Yeah, she can endure it. But, you know, it's still not right. It's not right. Don't break her fingers. Why would they break her fingers? I, that don't make any sense. She owed them uh, betting, the, betting money on bets or something. Yeah, like get your fingers broken. Who knew that damn sexual? Isn't it made of rubber or like some type of like silicone? Like, yeah, I mean, but I assume that there's like actual like moving, you know, mechanisms on the inside of that, right? You know, ah, the robot hand job. Yeah, right. Probably you know, there's that actual, you know, whatever it might be, you know, some sort of plastic or whatever that or. You know, I doubt they're making them out of metal on the inside, but I sure hope not. Because that would be fucked. <laughs> Three thousand pounds, you never know. <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. <laughs> All right, well, let's go from a robot that gets fucked to actual people who like to fuck each other in public, if you will. Ray, let's talk about this couple having sex in Domino's Pizza. <laughs> oh my God! There's actually footage. Of this couple getting it on at the uh, counter of a Domino's Pizza out there in Scarborough, England, for our English fans out there. Oh, my God, man. A lot of stuff happening over there, apparently. Yeah, they were caught on CCTV getting heated uh, during a February mm-hmm. encounter. And not just because of the pizza oven. No, and not because of the kava either, man. Holy <laughs> shit. <That was> fucking <laughs> hot. But <laughs> there's a video uh, showing the uh, couple... Ordering food and then simulating sex with a cone. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, and then performing oral sex, uh, but by the counter. Uh, the two had intercourse on the counter. 
Domino's Pizza, man, it's it's weird. Like the employees, they're just like not paying attention. Yeah, or? that's what I was wondering too. Um, I believe one of the articles that I read on this thing said that they were back making a 12 inch pepperoni pizza <laughs> uh, for them. What, was while that for uh, Samantha? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that was for uh, whatever this lady's name is, uh, she can Dan- Daniela. She can endure the 12-inch she, she pepperoni. Will, she will be able to endure the 12-inch pepperoni <laughs> pizza. So there's a picture over here. She looks like, uh, yeah. So she covered her eyes. Doesn't appear to be covering her eyes. So fu- <laughs> fuck you, fucking Huffington Post. Fake news. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the video has actually been taken down as well. So I'm kind of upset. Just kind of hoping that we could kind of uh, see what the dealio was. But. Yeah, a little bit of an interesting angle here. The court rejected her uh, her lawyer's claim that the video was not admissible, uh, admissible evidence because it had been illegally posted on the Internet. So he's trying to get a little loophole action. So uh, he's trying to get a little uh, a little something, but... You know what we have to do, right? Oh, freaking uh, do not pay. Let's check out do not pay. I'm not paying this ticket. All I'm right, not so going to jail. How do we want to say this? We want to say, mm. I got caught having sex on in camera. A See, it's pizza. so strange because they're talking about it being on camera, but none of the employees actually reported this, did they? Of course they didn't. They were beating. They were beating their pepperoni in the back, <laughs> or their sausage, if it were. Fucking degenerate, fucking Domino's employees. Okay, I got caught having sex on a, on camera in a pizza place. Okay, let's see what happens. Do not pay. Oh man, you know what it is. Twenty four hours. Need extra help. Yeah, twenty four hours. God damn. Well, you know, do, we tried. Do not pay is uh, still. Um, still a little bit early on in the game, so I think even a real lawyer would be like, "Yeah, call me back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're fucked." So yeah, I mean, there's really only one thing that you can do to make sure that you don't have to s- to see people uh, having sex in a Domino's, and that is to avoid the noise. Ah! Yeah, that's uh, that's where I have inserted the avoid the noise stuff. I want to get busy in a Burger King, King bathroom. bathroom. Uh, <laughs> Ah, that's our transition for the next one. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, our, uh, we've got another couple who actually had sex, uh, in possibly a Burger King bathroom in a Walmart in a library. Um, yeah, they, uh, it was a married couple from Louisiana. They're facing obscenity charges for allegedly posting a video, of public sex acts to a porn site, which is Pornhub. Yet actually, again, yes. Pornhub again. So, um, you know what? Actually, uh, just kind of off the uh, off the top of my head, I was thinking the article actually has their name. So, uh, what their name is on Pornhub? So oh, you're gonna investigate? Let's see. Let's see what this looks like. So, Eddie, why don't you uh, kind of tell them a little bit more of the story, and then I'll, uh, you know. Yeah, this couple definitely into voyeurism. They like to go out and have sex in public places and film it, and then upload the videos to Pornhub. Uh, apparently they got a nice little, uh, you know, subscriber count, I suppose, or following, uh, they got a lot of followers. Uh, police say they received a report of lewd activity inside a home library, alleging that the couple recorded themselves engaged in sex and uploaded the video to Pornhub. Well, hold on. It gets better. Videos reportedly show Elizabeth Jernigan exposing herself and masturbating inside businesses at Southland Mall. And library video shows the wife performing sex acts on her husband near a periodicals rack. I love the, uh, you know, the details Mm -hmm. in this. It was by the periodicals rack. It was not by the bathrooms. It was not by the water fountain. It was directly near the periodicals rack. And, uh, yeah, the couple were both charged with six counts each of obscenity. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Here's their uh, here's their page. Um, yeah, it's in a car. Uh, here, oh my god, here she is. Oh my god, yep. It's on there, dude. It's oh still my on go- there. Oh my god, dude. She is straight up in the Walmart. She's in a bean bag. She's in a what? fucking dude. She's spreading her ass cheek. She's laying in a fucking bean bag with a vibrator. I wonder who set up the camera. Um, probably the here, husband. Um, let's see. Here she is in uh yeah, here's her exposing her tight little pussy and ass in public. She appears to be in the mall here. Here she is getting fucked uh up a fence. Um yeah. Um wow. They certainly uh seem to have quite a scale lot. of one to ten, how she look? Um, I don't know. Four oh, maybe. Ouch. 
So, yeah, not that attractive. When you're a four, you can only get fucked at a Burger King bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's not getting... Shout out to all them fours out there. I'm not hating on you. Yeah, Just no. Get it in wherever you can. No, I mean, she's not terrible looking, Um, but yeah, she's not, you know, all that good looking either. So, um, yeah, so there it is. They got they got busy. How many followers do they have? Uh, they actually have, uh, I believe they have over four... They have over uh, four thousand. Jeez. Um, so ac- there, there is a market for this. Yes, they actually have. Um, so they've actually got um, over like a million views. I think uh, the article. They've got two million video views, and they have five thousand subscribers. What I don't understand is why not go pro? Just go professional. You're uploading it to Pornhub, anyways. Why not get paid for it? I just. I don't I mean I'm sure that there is I'm sure they're getting paid somehow. I'm sure that there there is uh there is monetization of Pornhub. Really? Yeah. You get paid. I mean it's the same thing like YouTube. So you could download a bunch of, you know, illegal uh stuff and then upload it to Pornhub on your channel and get money for it? Uh or do I- you have to create your own content? I think you have to, yeah. There, I think there's separate, like, uh, you know, community or whatever. Because I'll just like hang out here and just download like 25 billion gigs of stuff and just like yeah. get paid. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it's it's different than that. You have to be like, it's called like Pornhub community or something. So anyway, uh, the, the, you know, yeah. they get you in the fine print. It's always the details. I mean, that get you. Well, right, but I mean, I think that that's what that is. So you know, well, whatever just, they got paid, your own. hopefully it's enough to uh, pay off these little tickets they're getting. Up. Yeah, they uh, they got charged with six counts of obscenity, um, and you know, obviously- the only problem I have with this is that uh, you know, stay away from the kids. You know, Burger King, Walmart, you got kids around, ain't nobody got time for that shit. You yeah, know? if you're fucking in front of me and my kid, my potential kid, my mm. future kid, you might get fucking smacked upside I mean, the head. Just I saying. think they're actually possibly. <laughs> Potentially making a kid, right? Isn't that what they're doing? I don't know. Yeah, but not. I want my kids seeing that shit. Or my cousin's kids or my friend's kids or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Inappropriate. Oh, my God. Giving a blowjob while being pulled over by a cop. That's Take one of that shit videos. to Domino's. Ain't nobody wants to see that. No oh, fucking my God. Woman. She is something else. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, so if you couldn't use the bathroom at BK because someone was getting busy in it, you aren't left with many options, so you might just have to shit in your neighbor's front yard. <laughs> Let's talk about the mad pooper. <laughs> the mad uh, pooper. The fucking mad pooper. <laughs> How do you like that fucking transition? Oh, that was money. <laughs> so yeah, the fucking mad pooper. Police in Colorado are looking for a jogger they say is repeatedly interrupting her runs to defecate in public. <laughs> interrupting her runs because she's got runs. <laughs> she's got the runs. Oh my god. She's running away. She's in a scary movie. She get she can't take it. That's why I always wondered like in scary movies, you know how people say like you got scared the shit out of you and you literally poop your pants? Yeah. Nobody in horror movies ever shits their pants from being scared. Yeah, but I have seen movies where, so, you know, like, when you actually die, you know, you poop yourself, right? Yeah. So I've seen that in movies and stuff where people, like, poop themselves. Okay, after they die. well, at least so. they got a little bit of that action going on. So, but. But, uh, yeah, this jogger, just jogging around, <laughs> must not be a fan of this uh, this person's house. <laughs> got to, you know, pull the pants down, drop a deuce in the front lawn. There. Multiple times. <laughs> multiple fucking times. It's so funny because it's like. I think it's been happening like the last seven weeks or something like that. Yes, the, for the past seven yeah. weeks. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, there was a whole article or the whole news segment that I watched on it where they took it super seriously. And uh, it was uh, it was quite hilarious. Um, you know, they they really want to find this uh, mad pooper. And uh, um, even Charmin is getting involved. The uh, the Charmin Twitter page uh, popped up and said that they... Uh, Let's uh, read what their uh, their thing says. It says, uh, if the mad poop, hashtag mad pooper turns herself in, we'll give her a year's supply of TP to help with her runs and then turd emoji. Um, mm, so Sounds like a trap. 
Yeah, so she know. would get uh she get one year free of toilet paper. Obviously, they, you know, that's like a publicity stunt for Charmin. Yeah. Um and then it gets even crazier. There is a guy that uh put out a YouTube video. He stepped forward, he claims to be the spokesperson for the mad pooper. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would the mad pooper have a spokesperson? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Oh um, man. But uh the statement uh released reported that the lady is in uh she's dealing with a severe brain injury and she's also having a difficult time recovering from gender reassignment surgery oh so have we confirmed that this is not uh <laughs> you know this doesn't seem like a very feminine thing to do no not really <laughs> so not it really. kind of makes sense i mean we all know that girls don't poop so yeah yeah this is not this is not caitlin jenner is it do we know i sure hope not okay i just want to make sure so um yeah the uh apparently the name uh that he has given this person is shirley so hmm. um yeah you know, Colorado man call me Shirley um or don't so um yeah so apparently you know this the, the mad pooper hasn't been caught yet um it's not just happening in this lady's yard either uh actually she has uh pooped in uh the Walgreens parking lot uh oh, and multiple people have come out and said that she shit in their backyard but really that was just fucking people like a husband who didn't clean up the dog shit from the night before and his wife was all mad at him and yelling at him about it and he's like no it was the mad pooper i'm telling you i saw this lady she was jogging by her house then she just fucking opened up our fence she went in the backyard she took a fucking she popped a squat dropped a deuce then she fucking wiped with fucking handy naps and she threw it down and she left so craziness so anyway yeah uh hopefully the mad pooper pooper will be uh, brought to justice colorado man what's going on with colorado uh yeah i don't know somebody get this lady some weed man hell yeah maybe she'll uh maybe she'll she'll be too she'll be too uh paranoid to leave the house there to, you go uh, fucking poop in someone what else's could yard. possibly make you more paranoid than dropping your pants and taking a shit somewhere out in public seriously <laughs> Like, I don't want to get caught doing that. I I can actually think of one thing that might make you a little bit more paranoid. What's that, Ray? Having an anus full of gold. Ooh. A rectum just filled with gold. Getting robbed would not be fun. Rectum damn near killed him. The fucking gold <laughs> butt smuggler. Sri Lankan man. Uh, yes. He raised some suspicion by the way that uh that he kept looking. Uh what was the thing? I believe that they said that it was uh suspicious movements. Yeah. Uh not of the bowel variety, but AKA, possibly. We need to write something down to justify us uh harassing you. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. He had a fucking butthole filled with fucking gold. I'll tell you what, I've had a, I've definitely had, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that joke because it'd be misinterpreted. So we'll just, uh, we'll just say I've never had gold in my butt. So I do believe last week I did talk about <laughs> having, uh, a gerbil in my butt that I named, uh, Ralphus. So, um, <laughs> But uh, he's not made of gold, so a fucking kilo of fucking gold up yeah. this guy's asshole. Yeah, he was headed for two point two pounds. Headed for India, uh, two point two pounds worth. I wonder what the value. Oh, uh, there four, you go. Four point five million rupees or twenty nine thousand dollars. Thirty G's. Um, yeah, might as well say thirty G's. So he paid a hundred thousand rupee uh, rupees, and he was let go. Uh, it said the gold was wrapped in plastic bags inserted into his rectum, um, and he said there was four bags. You know, if I'm working in customs, because they're saying a customs official, you know, probably dug this thing out of there, I want a piece of that. Uh, you know, all my hard work getting this shit out of there, <laughs> getting this gold out mm. of there. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want the gold. It, Where is the gold? Give me a piece of that because I earned my money today. I'm going to tell you what, man. If I see a fucking rainbow that that leads to an ends at a Sri Lankan man's asshole, I'm not getting the gold. I'm going <laughs> to leave the gold where it is. I don't want that gold. How funny would it be if he had this like rainbow following him around everywhere like, he went? That's how they knew. They're like, why is this guy have a fucking rainbow? Where is like, all this what? light coming what? from? I don't know. Why is this refracted <laughs> light just right going towards his fucking stink star? <laughs> like, oh fucking dude has a bunch of gold up his ass so uh you know what's <laughs> look at this he's got a rainbow suspicious movements <laughs> oh my god 
I'll tell you what's interesting about this too. So actually, uh, we were uh, we were considering doing our top movies of all time, um, and my favorite movie, which you know won't be a surprise, I've actually talked about it on the podcast before, is a movie called The Holy Mountain, and uh, I actually even have a tattoo of the particular wording in the movie, which is "You can change yourself into gold." And uh, that you are excrement. And so there's, um, you know, it's based on the old, uh, you know, um, you know, basically being able to um, transfer like base metals into gold um, and alchemy. And this guy is the alchemist. And so he's kind of like taking that to humanity. And so um, there's a whole scene where this guy that this Jesus figure is basically pooping into this like machine thing and then eventually the end goal is they turn the shit into gold so Mm. um yeah i just thought that was an interesting little uh little parallel here so maybe this guy got inspired by that maybe he was inspired by uh, that or inspire robot or inspired by you know making a lot of money and so yeah or maybe maybe just maybe maybe his turds actually turned into gold oh that's what i would have said do not pay that's what I would have said. I got caught with gold up my ass. Let's try. Let's see what the <laughs> fuck do not pay has to say. I mean, it's worth a shot, right? Um, I have man, thirty grand. I, you know, somebody got to call my robot lawyer. Somebody has called my robot lawyer. I don't know how this gold got in my ass. I was just walking around the airport, not the saying I'm suspicious. Moving. I wonder what a guy with. A kilo of fucking gold up his ass walks like, because that has to be a goofy looking walk. Uh, yeah, suspicious movement. I got caught with gold in my rectum. It's thinking. Nope, nothing. Ah, damn God it. damn it. I'm going back to the Lucky Charms for this one. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that's I, probably hey, the best one. Or the uh, asshole robot that stuffed gold up my ass while I was sleeping. <laughs> I don't want to hear what happened last <laughs> night in your fucking free time. I, I, you know, I'm not going to jail for this. This yeah. fucking robot fucking fucked me again. Not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, those could all be misinterpreted or interpreted <laughs> just just the right way. Oh shit. Oh shit. You so, ready for some video corner? Yes, yeah, so let's fucking do video corner. All right, we got four videos for you guys. We're gonna put the links in the uh, podcast descriptions with the timestamps as and well. And on the website as well. And, and on the website and uh in the uh, the video corner is gonna have its own little fucking section. So how many yes. ads do I have to look at here? I forgot to plug that on uh social media, so uh if you're looking for the videos for uh, everything that we're watching, you can also find them on the JOAT Video Corner page of JOATpodcast.com. Yes. So are you ready for a little jetpack action, Ray? Uh, let's check the jetpack out. The world's only jetpack flies in New York. Let's All see right, what three, this looks two, like. Three, two, one. On the sky. Some ins- ooh, inspirational music here. Yeah, we got a little landscape action, a little skyline, New York City skyline. Personal jetpack made Ray, in flight. Check this shit out right here. This is almost three years old. Two Jeez, years old. this guy looks like the Rocketeer, Woo! dude. That looks like the Rocketeer. Holy shit, dude! How far can I fly with this thing? He's flying over the uh, Ellis Island right now, right by the Statue of Liberty. Wow, that is badass, man. I think it was four twenty right there. He is high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was actually kind of hoping he was going to go higher than this. But I imagine that there's a pretty... Yeah, well, you see all those skyscrapers. Yeah, you kind of want to be, like, you know, above the water, I guess. You don't want to fall gonna... too far, yeah. yeah. But uh, you want to talk about, like, traffic in L.A., traffic in Chicago, wow. traffic anywhere. Just hop in your little uh, jetpack and just beat the traffic and fly wherever you got to go. Until there's a bunch of people with jetpacks. <laughs> then, you know... It's traffic jams and stuff. Very so. true. That was super cool. Uh, that was called The World's Only Jetpack Flies in New York on YouTube. Yes. All right. Ready for the next one, my friend? Yes, sir. This next one is called Midnight Pulp. No, Re- th- no, no. This oh, is midnight. actually Midnight Pulp is actually the page that's from. Um, oh. This is actually the the cocaine oh, packing machine. Is. Okay. Uh, this is actually a machine that was uh, found in Brazil. It's capable of packing 150 Th- 150,000 baggies of cocaine. What? Uh, yeah. Holy so. cow. Don't tell the gold rectum guy about this. Yeah. So, All here right. we go. Three, two, one. Oh, look at this thing. It's a fucking assembly line this machine. Is, yes. This is full blown 
warehouse uh, manufacturing going on right here. This is how you use robots. It's just dropping bags of coke in this giant bucket. Mm -hmm. Look at this fucking thing. Look at that. This is From a money making fucking phenomenon right literally, here. Literally, literally a fucking. I Look fucking love it. I can just hear the fucking cash register right now. Ching, 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 ching. Look at that thing, dude. Wow. Now you just need a robot to fucking distribute that. Oh shit. my god, there it is. There it is, my friend. Dude, that was fucking fantastic. All right. The Net. evolution of fucking of the drug trade, <laughs> drug, drug trafficking. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Okay. Are we going to the clown now? Yes. So this is called cl uh, clown pills, and this is from a grimy ghost who is connected with everything is terrible, which is an amazing fucking website. Uh, found found footage stuff that they combine together um, to make awesome compilations, and then they twist and warp it. And so this is one of uh, one of those. So let's watch it. Uh, it is uh, clown pills. Ready? Right. Three, two, one. Oh, this is straight out of public access. Yes. Mm. He's got a little necklace that says "kid" around his neck. Mm. He's got orange hair, painted face. He's like a fake ass mm. bozo the clown. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, oh no. Boy. She's about to get hooked on fucking amphetamines. She gets so hungry Dude, and this fat. this blonde is a fucking cunt. Fuck this bitch. Oh, my God. You get some uppers. <laughs> They're just hanging out there. He decides to project his voice. Then <laughs> they oh, just there. oh, he there fucking appeared. Is. He is a. He looks like fucking Bozo the Clown's fucking uh, like sidekick. Crackhead cousin. There's a weird guy in a fucking oh, eagle costume. Oh, there's that eagle guy. Remember the man cow? Oh. Uh... Eagle woman. <laughs> it's eagle man. This is straight I out of the... I feel bad now because I'm a cunt. <laughs> oh, this is straight out of the early 90s. Dude, I wish that Asian chick would have smacked the shit out of that blonde chick. Oh, my God. Anybody that tries to get me to take drugs is the best. Clearly, he didn't see the cocaine video. The co cocaine mm. bagging video. We can't say no. Oh, man. This fake-ass Zach Morris is about oh, to my. fall he's, off his skateboard. He's not a bad skateboarder. Oh, my God. Dude, could that microphone around his neck be any bigger? Probably not. That clip-on mic? Jesus Christ. Look like oh a dragonfly on a shirt. If you don't want to do drugs, you are stupid. So look at all these, look at all the kids of the world, and then they were per they were immediately molested by this fucking clown. <laughs> oh, Let's, hey, did I really help you? Let's do celebration. Ah, see, now I know. Why, Let's get high as fuck. I know why the blonde don't like the Asian because she's a better dancer. The Asian breaking it down. Grimy ghost. Grimy ghost. Grimy ghost. Oh, this is like the advertisement or whatever. Yeah, this is their uh, their page. Everything is terrible. Is amazing stuff. So they're the kings of this. So um, yeah, well, there, there you is. go. There it is. Okay, and then uh, final video on the agenda. Um, this is for um, what is my personal personal favorite. Um, so what everything is terrible is, which is basically like, you know, they find all this old footage and stuff from, you know, um, old public access stuff and like church videos and blah, 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 blah. And they basically like twist it and warp it and put it together into compilation uh, videos. Um, so the whore church actually was birthed from what is my personal favorite uh, torrent website ever, which is uh, called Cinemageddon which is basically all just offbeat cinema, B-budget movies, just an awesome, awesome torrent site. And uh, the community there, they basically, a bunch of people joined together, and with all the footage and stuff of all the movies and such that were there, they created a whole compilation um, called The Whore Church. There's volume one that's out. It's full length. It's about an hour, you know, over an hour. Um, and they're going to be coming out with a second one, and it is just amazing, just Awesome fucking metal music over gore and just the weirdest shit you've ever fucking seen in your life. And you can never unsee it. And I love showing it to new people. So this is the trailer for Whoa, just to give the them an church. idea. The horror church is not horror. H -O -O. No, 
No, H-O-R-R-O-R. it's H-O-R-R-O-R. <laughs> it's W-H-O-R whore. Right. It is the, <laughs> the whore. The oh, whore. Correct. Correct. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to watch this. Oh, my God. We'll have to watch the full thing, too, because you will never, you will not believe your motherfucking eyes. Well, so. let's watch this one first. Oh, then. yes, yes. I mean, right. the full thing is like an hour, so we're not doing that. So I'm going to okay. turn it up so we can hear it. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, it's public access again. It took four years. Oh, look at this guy. A vampire guy. 15,000 pounds of VHSs. That's about what I left in Florida, all this fucking wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your butts. Oh, oh this lady boy. is pissed. What is she screaming about? Oh, there he is. Oh, that is the uh, the Eric Rowan mask. Horror Church, volume one. Fire, fire, Satan, Satan, fire. Oh my God! People We've got are on sails. Fire. We've got headless horsemen. Oh, we had uh, Samu there, or Fatu, oh, I believe man. that was oh, a cat, cat pooping, pooping into a toilet. And we've got a weird. Oh, that. Yep. I don't know what that, that is. That was pornog- bizarre pornography. <laughs> Coming for 2012. Is that Sable? Uh, I think her period just exploded on her panties, but that's all right. Oh my God! I'm going to hell for watching that. Yeah. You might just go to hell, the whore church. Yeah, it's it too is. Late. Been there and done that. <laughs> it is amazing. I can only tell you that it is incredible. The the brothers vulture they're called, and uh, yeah, um, I actually liked it so much they gave it away for free on Vimeo. The whole thing, and uh, I actually decided to purchase the DVD just because I really appreciated the work that so went into it. So, is the DVD like the the promotion, or is that all just different from what the movie is? No, so that's the trailer for the movie. And the movie is, I mean, the movie is just a bunch of, you know, clips of things put together with, like, buffers, you know, and music and stuff. Um, So. Oh, so it's an hour of just clips and stuff. It's an hour of just the most batshit insane clips of things that they called from all of these different VHSs, softcore porn, weird shit. Just, it's just crazy it's fucking mind-blowing front to back it's so fucking bizarre um and yeah you definitely need to check out the whole thing so it's a lot of fun uh maybe next lifetime (laughs) no you should do it dude i think you would uh, no thank you the uh wait you have to yeah there's so much better things in life i need to watch than that you need to watch the uh the gaping butthole uh mini golf putting uh yeah Oh, that's in the thing. That's in, that's in the thing. Um, yeah, it's from a porn. It's uh, chicks have their buttholes like gaped open, and then uh, they set up, and then people play mini golf, and um, they hit mini uh, or they hit golf why balls. Would I, why would anybody want to watch that? Uh, that is so that's, strange. It's really bizarre. Why would that exist? So I don't know. But it's quick, and then it's on the next thing. So yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys should check out the horror church. Maybe I'll actually embed the entire full thing because they give it away for free. Um, I will embed it in uh, in into your brain the video forever, corner because uh, section for you guys. So if you guys want to check this out, because it's a lot of fucking fun. So um, yeah. So anyway, um, so yeah, let's uh, let's hit Inspiro Bot and uh, then let's hit the randomizer. And cool, then let's, cool. Uh, let's go home. Even Inspiro though I'm home right Bot, now. save me from this horror church. Yeah. All right, you want to go first? You want me to go first? I'm ready. So let me see. Generate. Scroll down. I don't want to scroll down. If you are... All right, so I got uh, some feet in a puddle here. Some nice looking shoes. Some nice looking kicks there. And it says, if you are not a supporter of your feelings, you are probably not comfortable with your own sexuality. Wait, say that again? If you are not a supporter of feelings, you are probably not comfortable with your own sexuality. Interesting. I mean, I guess that could probably make sense, right? If yeah. If you don't have the feels, you don't ha- you don't have the sex. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh that was an interesting one that actually probably was uh, you know, too, you know, made too much sense. So, hopefully this will make less sense. Spirobot is is too good now. I think yeah. I think they broke themselves. You know what it is? They're trying to make these fucking t-shirts and like, you know, money talks. All right. So I've got a uh, cat and he's got a uh, tie on and he looks a lot like my cat, Ember. 
And uh, he has uh, got a little caption next to him. It says, if you are not doing anything about telephones, you are a failure. Interesting. So, Not yeah. cell phones, telephones. Right. So I'm not really sure what exactly that means, but, you know. Maybe you can smuggle telephones up your butt uh, through the airports and shit. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think this guy just looks pretty adorable, so I like him. <laughs> the cat? <laughs> the cat. I want to pet him. I really want to pet that cat, so. All right, so let's do randomizer. Um, Sweet. Universal call out. How about this? So let's do, uh, since we're coming up on, uh, I am preparing for my Friday the 13th party. Let's do 13. 13. Ooh. Unlucky 13. Hitting them with that 13. All right, you ready? Let's do it. I'm already ready already. All right, you ready? Yes, sir. We got pharmacy. We got cows. We got death. No. Oh, jeez. No, no. Blacksmiths. Sewing machines, <laughs> uh, bridges, uh, football, lions, cobblers, South America, athletics, Native Americans, and shoes. I have no idea. This is a tough one, man. This is a tough one. The closest thing that I had was... Uh... Wait, say the last three again. Uh, athletics, Native Americans, and shoes. I'm going to go with the Native Americans because I think that was on yeah, one of the ones Native recently. Americans. And, uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to go with it. So, yeah. <laughs> Native Americans. Native Americans it is. We're rolling the dice. This is definitely <laughs> not the best decision because things have not gone all that well for Native I Americans I swear to God, past. if Tataka ends up dead, oh, I don't know God. what the fuck to do. If that fucking, if that Italian guy who pretended to be an Indian on that commercial in the 70s and he cried <laughs> when someone fucking littered dies... He's probably already dead, but if he's not and he dies, I'm going to be upset. Yeah, if a fucking Native American dies, we're shutting the show down, goddammit. I mean, chances <laughs> are that a Native American will probably die, right? But, There's yeah. a solid chance. Seven days? Yeah. Probably a pretty good chance, but hopefully not way you know newsworthy of it, but who knows? Who yeah. knows? We'll see. Maybe there'll be a really good, uh, you know, inspirational uplifting native american story that would be awesome for something us equivalent of about. the space jam uh yes bunny. the bunny that would be cool that would be super like space awesome jam bunny. if you guys get a chance google uh you know guinness book world record bunny well uh i'll put uh i'll put that in the show notes yes I'll that, put that bunny video in the is show notes. fucking fantastic if we watch any other so we'll have video corner which will have the actual videos but if we watch any other uh videos or if we have any other different Things that we think might kind of expand upon the uh, show for you guys, we will post those things in uh, in the show notes section um, on the website. So yes, you can do not check those sleep on that jerk of all uh, oh. joat podcast dot com. Yes, check it out. So uh, with that being said, the show's over. Yes. We are done. We have done it all. Another one in the books. Another one bites of dust. And yeah, so we're going to be back next week. We'll have Native Americans universal call out and all the usual shenanigans and fun. And yeah. We love you guys. And we Thanks are... for sticking with us. Audi. And uh, see you later. Yes. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>